Hello, my name is Mike Sims. I'm the fleet manager for MWI Pumps. And right here next to me is our CT6 Prime Right uh, trash pump. And if you're watching this, uh, you're interested in how all this thing's going to operate. And we're going to do walk arounds and show you how to properly uh, turn this piece of equipment on and have it perform the way it needs to be out in the field. When receiving this piece of equipment, the first thing you want to do before you start any kind of setup or, or start the engine is do a general walk around of the piece of equipment and do a visualize to make sure that everything looks proper, um, that there's no leaks, no visible signs of issues, uh, everything is in its place. You want to check oil level, um, you know, dipstick, you want to make sure that, you know, we got the proper oil level in the unit. We don't want to run it with low oil. Um, you can check coolant levels. Um, at the top, it's a visual inspection at the top of the unit. There's a expansion container up here that sees it. You should be able to see in there and see a level of uh, coolant inside. And if by any chance somebody has overfilled the expansion tank on the coolant, you might see some overflow come out the tube if it's been overfilled. And just making sure that you're ready to go um, before you turn the key on. Uh, the other thing that I like to check is make sure that you're not missing anything on the back of the pump. This particular fitting has an O-ring in it. You want to make sure it's there. You want to make sure it's not damaged. This is on the suction side of the pump. And then on the discharge side of the pump, uh, before you connect the hose up and without it running, you could put your hand in there and fill the flapper and make sure that there's no sticks or twig, twigs or anything in there that's gonna prevent that from sealing inside. So when we start this up to pull prime, it's essential that that check valve seats, that we don't suck any air through there. At this point, you wanna go ahead and make sure the operation of the equipment is, is satisfactory. So we wanna make sure that it starts, it runs, before we do the initial setup um, to start pumping water. So at this point, what I would generally do is go ahead and just turn the key on. You're gonna hear the fuel pumps kick on. That's priming the fuel system. You'll be able to see what the battery level's at, so it's gonna be good enough to start the engine. Um, the temperature of the coolant, this is gonna be an oil pressure, and then this is the hour meter. Uh, in the middle here, when this thing's running, it will actually tell you how many gallons of fuel you're burning an hour. So at this point now, the fuel pump has primed itself up. It's ready to start. We're starting right now in manual mode. So it's just like starting your car. You're gonna turn the key to the right, and it's gonna crank over, and it's gonna sit there and idle. So as I said earlier, you can see just sitting here island, we're only burning a half a gallon of fuel an hour. But it's vital that in the field, if you want to know how much fuel you're using or when do you need to refuel the fuel tank, this will give you a real good gauge as far as that fuel burn. Oil pressure is good. This is our RPM output, 950. Uh, coolant temperature, and now we're charging at 14.2. So all signs show everything is operating properly. If there was a problem with the charging system, we would see it here. The unit is electronically controlled through an ECU, so it has its own protection. So if it, if it doesn't have oil pressure or if the coolant temperature gets hot, um, it will send a signal. The ECU will send a signal to the control panel to shut the engine down for safety so we don't internally damage the engine. Now the next thing we would go into is setup. All right, the next uh, portion that we're gonna show you is demonstrate the operation of this piece of equipment. Uh, but before I start it up and, and proceed to start pumping, a couple things I wanna stress in this video is uh, how we prime it up. Uh, the engine is, has an engine mounted compressor. Uh, we're blowing a, a volume of air across the Venturi system. The speed of air going through the Venturi system actually creates a vacuum on the suction hose, pulling all the air out of the hose. And with the air, we'll pull the water up and prime the pump. Once the pump is primed up, the Venturi system then becomes irrelevant. Okay, it, it'll, you'll see it spill a bit of water out the bottom, just what's bypassing. But if there are issues with priming, 
these are the three things we need to check. Anything above the water line, a crack in the hose, a bad O-ring, anything that's going to allow air into the system will affect whether or not it primes. As we showed earlier in the video, the check valve, the flapper, if something is in there, a stick, a uh, leave, something that is preventing that valve from slamming shut and sealing to prevent air from sucking through the backside will prevent it from priming. The third thing is more of a maintenance when you bring your uh, the equipment or when equipment gets maintained. We'll remove the four bolts, remove the top of the inventory. There's a screen in there. Depending on the material you're pumping, it could clog up with clay. You, might, you just have to clean that screen out to allow the, the volume of air to move through that screened area properly so it can pull the water up into the system. Once we start running it, the one gauge we're going to maintain is the vacuum, the suction vacuum. Depending on how much lift you have will depend where it starts to prime. We don't have a lot of lift here, so around five, seven pounds, you're going to start to see it start to pump water. Once it's fully primed, it's going to go up to probably 15, 17, 20, depending on how fast you run. Once it primes, it's just controlling the volume you want to pump based on the speed of the engine. Okay. One thing to look for once we start running, we're going to go ahead and monitor the, uh, the, the control panel, make sure that the engine temperature is right, we're getting oil pressure, we can actually read how much fuel we're using, and if by any chance somebody has overfilled the expansion tank on the coolant, you might see some overflow come out the tube if it's been overfilled till it equalizes out, but it's just something to look for. As long as it's not overheating, it's nothing to be uh, scared about. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start it. We're going to start this in manual mode, and we'll let it, we'll let it uh, idle for a second. We'll gently bump it up to about uh, 1,100 RPMs to it primes, and then I'm going to speed it up to about 1,500 RPMs so you can see the water, how it's going to pump out of the pump. Oh, one thing also I wanted to talk about real quick, you want to make sure you keep this as level as possible. It's not bad here. But if all possible, you want to go ahead and lower this down and keep this, keep this tank as level as possible. One, two, one couple things that's important is that we don't starve the oil reservoir. If you got it at too much of a pitch, you might lose the pickup tube in the oil pan, which could starve the engine. The other is where the pickup tubes are in the fuel. So if you get low on fuel and you got it too much of a pitch, the fuel's going to run away from the pickup tubes and you can run it out of fuel. So if all possible, keep it as level as possible. You can hear the pump priming up now. It's already starting to move some water. So now I can just throttle it up to whatever, whatever volume of uh, water I feel necessary to pump down. And gently just button the arrows up or down controls the throttle. So each bump of the arrow goes up 25 RPMs. You want to start up slow. Make sure everything's staying intact on the discharge side. And then once I'm comfortable, it's just now just monitoring the system. One thing you should think about on the discharge side, if you're coming off with just a piece of single lay flat, which is a real flexible hose, uh, it can kink when it makes that, if it's got to make a sharp turn to discharge. In those instances, we like to put an elbow on the discharge. So the hard elbow will make the turn, and then you can go to a soft lay flat hose so you're not creating any restrictions. Now at this point, it's just letting it run and monitoring the system. If you're putting this on an automation system, you're going to want to understand what RPM you want to run at, so you can go ahead and program it in the panel to run at that, at that speed. Now, if any chance you're running in manual and the volume of water goes down and allows air into the hose, it will lose prime. It can run without water. If the water comes back up, uh, it'll prime itself back up. The only thing I, I, I really don't like is it running full RPM and losing prime and then priming back up because you risk damaging the mechanical seals inside the pump. So everything should be soft start. Uh, slow to start, slow to shut down. All right, at this point, that, that, that is the demonstration. So now, if you're done pumping, you want to shut it down. You're just slowly going to go over here and get the arrow button down. Gently slow it down. Until the RPMs bottom out.
And if you've been running for an hour or so and it's been really, really hot, kind of let it idle for a minute or so to let the turbo cool down. It's just a good maintenance thing to protect the seals internally in the turbo. Um, it's just a good practice to have. But after a you know, certain time, you can see where the temperature is on the, on the display. If it gets at 185, you get down to around 180, 178, it's safe to go ahead and shut it off. And that's pretty much it. I can tell you, you know, if you have one of these in your possession and, and you're having questions about operation, feel free to contact us at mwipumps.com or the number that's going to be attached below in the video. Oh!